Hey, Brandon here. Welcome back to another episode of the 2023 NFL Draft Rookie Report. Welcome to the channel. I'm here with my good friend, Jason DiRienzo. He is a recent graduate of the Scouting Academy and co-founder of the Debbie Watch. We have a great show today. We are going to talk about Chase Brown. He is a running back who had a productive season this year at Illinois. Um, so we're excited to dig in this film. We're going to take a look at his 2020 film. We're going to do some scouting on that, tell you what we see in a scouting report. We are going to talk about his expected draft capital next April and then see if, what his future dynasty value is. So hit that subscribe button. Jason and I have done a lot of shows. We've done uh, Rasheed Rice. We've done Condre Miller. We've done Bigsby Flowers, all the names that you are going to be drafting in your rookie drafts next year. So welcome to the show, Jason. Thank you, Brandon. I'm ready to get get started on this one, buddy. I'm excited. Yeah. So uh, let's get into it. We're going to talk Chase Brown, and um, so you know he's five foot eleven, two hundred five pounds uh, on the season. Again, really productive season. He's kind of risen up draft boards here uh, this year, given his performance: sixteen hundred forty three yards, ten TDs, uh, averaging five yards a carry. He was also uh, productive in the passing game with twenty seven receptions for two hundred forty yards and three TDs. So. The way we start these shows out before we get to the scouting uh, report is we like to just look at some PFF stats here that I like to pull up. Um, so he runs zone and gap, something that Jason and I look at when we watch. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it's something that shows some versatility. He ran 205 plays in zone and 114 gap. So, uh, you know, again, that is good for versatility going to the NFL. Yards after contact, uh, important stat uh, from PFF here, 2.84. He was ranked 12th in the 2023 draft class. I sorted these uh, these uh, first two stats here I'm going to talk about with 150 carries and uh, players headed to the 2023 draft, which I think is important to kind of give some perspective. So he was ranked 12th in that category. This was was really interesting, Jason. Missed tackles forced, um, a PFF stat that, you know, is, is an interesting, don't know how they come up with this, but he was ranked first out of all the players in the 2023 draft class, which I found fascinating. That is fascinating, um, yeah. You know, so the next stat here, the elusive rating, he only had a 59.5. And I was looking at the formula on PFF, and they take missed tackles force as part of that whole formula to come up with elusive hmm. rating, but he was ranked 90th, and that's in all of college football. So that's not just the 2023 class, just so everyone is uh, pu you know putting that in pers perspective. And his overall run grade was an 81.3. He was uh, ranked 12th, and that was with the 2023 class. So very interesting, that, mi that missed tackles force forced um interesting number number one in the you know in the 2023 draft class i was very surprised when i saw yeah that. yeah i'm surprised by that too but you know what when i was watching the level of competition and you know just the amount of carries and snaps he was getting i think it has That's to do with true. opportunity That's and true. competition level mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's talk about his scouting profile, right? So we've watched the film at the end of these shows, guys. When you watch this, I'm going to link two films uh, that Jason and I have watched from this channel, okay? So you'll be able to then after the show, hit those links and be able to uh, kind of watch the film that Jason and I've watched. But we've watched probably four or five games. I know at least I have. I can only assume Jason has as well. Okay. Getting ready for these shows. Um, so these are, uh, I'm reading this from my Debbie to Dynasty dashboard, uh, Jason, these this scouting report. We're going to kind go over these five traits that we do when we do these shows the first is uh, vision and patience i liked his vision and his ability to cut back and pick correct gaps uh very patient runner consistently waiting for blocks to develop increases to open and i have here in my notes that i felt like sometimes he was too patient he was kind of stopping at the line of scrimmage and kind of waiting for things to develop waiting for those big hogs up front to make some lanes for him but i don't know if that's going to work in the nfl did, did you notice that on his film you know, I noticed that too. And I said the same thing the last time we talked about Tank Bigsby. It's kind of very similar where he's just a little bit too patient, cuts back too quickly. Um, but then I can see him being overly aggressive at the same time and trying to run up the middle, hits the backs of his offensive linemen. And we'll get into FS, his athleticism, but he can get himself out of it. But at the same time, vision and patience, I think it's just average to be honest with you with what I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he excelled in that uh, no. you know, to uh, an above average level. So here I have footwork and short area quickness here. I've got he's got quick feet, allowing him to set up tacklers. Um, I don't think he has elite ones cut stop start ability to make defenders miss. And I think he has average short area quickness and change of direction skills to create for himself. So again, an overall nice, I think, felt like good college back, good footwork. Like you mentioned earlier, the um, the competition wasn't, you know, elite in any way. 
But uh, I thought he had good footwork and short area quickness, but nothing that I, I came away with like super impressed with. Yeah, nothing I came away super impressed with either, but I do think his initial acceleration is pretty decent. It does help him out, um, and I do like his change of direction, but he can't do it unless he's in the open space, uh, not within a phone booth. He's got to have open space in order to really get that change. So, uh, again, just average to me. Yeah, so you, you just mentioned acceleration. That's the next trait, speed and acceleration. Um, you know, I think he's an explosive home run hitter. He was uh, a track guy in high school. Um, he show, I think he showed very good burst and can quickly accelerate to open space, mm -hmm. especially on outside zone runs. Um, I think he could run under a 4.4 at the combine, which will help his draft stock. And we're going to get to that portion of the show here in a couple minutes. So like you just mentioned, I thought he had some, you know, good acceleration. And I think when he gets to the second level, he's got some pretty decent speed. I think one of the, the faster backs in, in, in the class. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think the bread and butter for him is going to be those explosive breakaways. He just needs to get in the open field and he's gone. And that that's what's going to help him out at the next level. Everything else we're going to talk about a little bit more. Yeah. So the next trait here we talk about is the strength and contact balance. This is where I this is where I have him knocked down in my overall ranks for the mm -hmm. class. OK, um, you know, uh, I think he's a hard I have here in my notes. He's a hard, persistent runner, um, but he doesn't run a, with a lot of power behind his pads. I don't think he's getting those tough yards that I see on film. And I don't think he moves many piles with with his leg drive and with his with his lower half. And the one thing I noticed, and I and I and I've said this before on on different shows on different running backs that I learned from Kylan Hill. And you know, I really like Kylan Hill at Mississippi State. I I, yeah. I he he was a big miss for me. Um, just coming right out and saying it. And but I went back hey, and kind of looked. And and one thing that I noticed with him and that I I've, I've learned from him is that when guys don't square up their shoulders at the point of contact and they they kind of turn sideways. I saw Brown doing that a lot when he was getting forced to, you know, he knew that the collision was coming instead of just squaring up and trying to, to initiate the lick. He always kind of turned, turned sideways and, and kind of gave it a, a half effort. And I didn't really like that. And I, I think that strengthened the, the contact balance. I didn't see elite contact balance, which I think is like really, really important in the NFL. So I think if there's one thing about his scouting profile that has me concerned the most of everything that I saw on film was his his lower half strength and ability to move piles. There were some goal line stances that he just couldn't punch it in and he just doesn't have that. And I think if you don't have that in the NFL, I'm, I'm not sure what your success rate is going to be. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you just said. His play strength is definitely a det detriment to his development. Um, he does need to get stronger. The way I could put it, he can run through a maze, but if he tries to cheat, he's going to get stuck in a bush. So that's mm -hmm. not going to work very well in the NFL. What was that again? That was a good one. It's stuck in a bush. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if he can run through a maze, that he can absolutely do it. But if he tries to cheat and get through it, he's going to get stuck in a bush. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, his passing, uh, his pass catching, he had 27 receptions in 2022. It looked like a good hands catcher. I mean, I didn't see anything that to think that he wouldn't be able to catch the ball in the NFL. Um, you know, I think he could turn quickly upfield on screens and stuff like that and can do some damage, I think, with that acceleration and speed in the second level. But I, I my, you know, to tie in and to tie, you know, to end this scouting report, it's where I see him excelling in the NFL is maybe being a third down guy being contributing to that part of a backfield. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he can be a third down guy, and I think that's probably going to be his role. <laughs> So I think a concern I think that we have to to bring up for me I guess is his strength and contact balance and before the show I had heard a couple of days ago that you know he's going to be a fifth year college player yeah. so he's going to be almost 23 when he hits the draft I think he's going to be 23 come by April uh you know um and I and I somebody had put something out there on Twitter that it was really interesting, not talking specifically about Brown, but the the hit rate for fifth year seniors getting drafted in the first four rounds is really, really not good. Yeah. And you know what? I could see that the, the issue with a guy like this, I'm starting not to care about how old they are. Right. Mm -hmm. As long as there's immediate opportunity and draft capital available, then I don't care because running backs are only going to get through their first contract anyway. If they get to a second, that's fantastic. Right. But they're, that's the Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley's that sort of thing. Chase Brown, if he's already going to be this old and he doesn't get the draft capital and he lands on the depth chart behind a couple starters, that's automatically going to be a huge issue. So this definitely drops him down a bit. Yeah, I think so. So let's talk about his draft capital and his fantasy outlook. Um, you know, I have him rounds five through seven 
do you what what do you see him as far as his draft capital? I feel like he's yeah, going to be a late uh, you know a late day three guy for me. Yeah, I think teams are going to fall in love with his skill set. As far as I, I do think he's going to show out at the combine with that acceleration and speed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think there's a lot to like with within his pass catching ability. He didn't he didn't catch the ball right at the line of scrimmage or anything. He was actually outside into the second and third level. So that's going to be a big part of it. I see round three, round four. I could okay. I. I, I see that kind of trend moving on with him. Yeah, and as we know, when you go to the combine, everyone scraps everything, and everything's exactly uh, re-ranked anyway. So, um, yeah. his rookie draft selection, I have him round three. I can't imagine him being a round one or two pick in an upcoming five round wow. rookie draft. So, right now, I have him middle of the third to the fifth round. I mean, unless he lands in a spot that has just given him an opportunity um which i'm not sure how many opportunities are really going to be out there for nfl football teams you know next year as far as starting running backs three or four but i think they're going to get filled with players earlier taken in the draft so i think he's a a a late round three to five guy is you see yeah i got i got mid to late round three too yep okay all right. So fantasy, you know, uh, value ceiling. I see him as an RB four. I just can't see him getting into you know, the top 30 running backs. I mean, again, unless he gets the draft capital, which I'm not expecting him to do and lands in one of those great spots. Yeah, I think uh, for me, I got him at RB three as far as ceiling. And that's just because I like the pass catching ability and PPR. That's going to be very valuable. OK, so his uh, fantasy player comp. Um, I got Jerome Ford. I feel like he's going to take a path similar to Jerome Ford. He's going to get, he's he's going to get drafted. I think he's going to get put on a depth chart and he's going to have to wait for an an opportunity. I like that comp. I think Ford's a little bit more physical, but I can absolutely see the athleticism and everything that kind of evolves what Chase Brown is. Um, my comp is just because of what I saw at USC, uh, from Ronald Jones. He, Ronald Jones could only really make big plays off those big explosive breakaway runs. And we kind of saw that a little bit in the NFL too. And Ronald Jones didn't start out, uh, very hot. I could kind of see the similar thing with Chase Brown. So let me ask you a question to tie up this video. As far as your overall ranks on the Debbie watch, do you, is he in your top 10? I know I'm kind of throwing you a curveball here. I you know, wasn't, you know really what, I, I'd have show. to look. Um, are you talking about top 10 Debbie running, backs. running backs? Yeah, no, I'm talking about the, you know, rookie running backs. Is he, Oh, rookie, yeah, he's, he would be in top 10 for sure. Is he in your top 10? He's just yeah, outside and, my top 10 actually. Yeah. So. I think he's probably right around nine, 10, right, th- right there around there yeah i think i yeah. got him 11th or 12th um seems to be a pretty deep running back class so I think yeah it does. Be, and be, how it shakes out with uh the landing spots i think is going to be very intriguing yeah it really was and you know as this little side note before we let you guys go i went back and looked through 2019 through no i'm sorry 2017 through 21 and went back and and looked at all of the players past round four draft capital rounds five and later it is not good. So if you're a Chase Brown guy, you're going to want to hope that he, you you agree with Jason in this show that he gets round three or four draft capital because if he gets round five or later, um, there really are the, only the unicorns that really consistently make it to our dynasty roster. So okay. there you guys got it, man. There's Chase Brown. There's the profile. There's you know a little skill set of uh, his scouting report where we see him being drafted and uh, – you know, uh, where we can, can see him hitting our dynasty roster. So I appreciate you guys watching. And like I said earlier in the show, I'll be dropping two videos right here, right now for you to go and take a look at his film for yourself. And, and you can kind of, you know, see what you think and leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate everyone who watches and all the kind comments that are left for me. So thank you guys for watching.